Hey everyone, hope you had a nice Christmas. I recently came across an interesting video by another YouTuber, Joshua Fluke, that talks about this software that lets an employer remotely monitor their employees' activities on their computer. Basically, this software company had reached out to Josh to see if he would be willing to promote their product, and Josh hilariously rejects their proposal with this video by showing just how intrusive it is. This program lets your employer continuously see your screen in real time and even see all of your keystrokes. That's everything that you type. So your computer is basically under surveillance as you work remotely. The program even lets the employer remotely access files on the employee's computer and advertises that the employee won't even know that they're being monitored. I'll leave a link in the description to Josh's video about this software. Now, you would like to think that something like this software should just be completely illegal in Canada, full stop. However, unfortunately, it's not that straightforward. And as I will get into, the law varies depending on where you are in Canada, who you work for, and the general circumstances. Regardless, I think that this friction between remote monitoring and privacy is going to be a growingly important topic. And that's because obviously more and more jobs are being done remotely these days. And with more work being done remotely, employers have a legitimate interest in making sure that when their employees are working from home, they're being productive and fulfilling the obligations related to their employment that they're being paid for. So in this video, I'm going to discuss your privacy rights related to employment and the workplace in Canada, and where monitoring and surveillance would fit into that. My goal in this video is to get you informed so you can figure out when your privacy rights might be at risk of being violated, and if you believe they are, to let you know what steps you can take to stop that violation. So to start off, in Canada there's two main federal laws related to privacy. PIPETA, the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act, and the Privacy Act. The Privacy Act deals with how the federal government handles our personal information as civilians, whereas PIPETA deals with how businesses handle personal information. And so because we're talking about privacy in the workplace, uh, PIPETA is the law that we're going to talk about. So here's where the differences in law comes in. PIPETA is a federal law but doesn't apply to Alberta, British Columbia, or Quebec because each of those provinces have their own laws related to privacy. The provincial laws in these three provinces, however, are substantially similar to PIPETA because they're based on the same 10 fair information principles and so the rights and obligations enshrined in these laws are very similar. But to make matters more confusing, when it specifically comes to employee privacy in the workplace, PIPETA only applies to federal works, undertakings, or businesses like telecommunications, aviation, and banking. That means that this federal privacy law does not deal with employees in the private sector. But the privacy statutes in Alberta, British Columbia, and Quebec do apply to employees in the private sector. In Ontario, however, there is no provincial privacy statute dealing with employees in the workplace. So there's a clear gap in coverage then. So does that mean that employees in Ontario have no privacy rights in their workplace? Not exactly, but I'll come back to this a little bit later. Let's first start off with what exactly is protected by these privacy laws. These laws protect your personal information, which is defined as information about an identifiable individual. That means information that can identify an individual, such as their name, address, or phone number, as well as information about an identifiable individual, like their physical description, educational qualifications, or blood type. And it doesn't all have to be factual information. It can be subjective information as well, like comments, opinions, or evaluations. So when it comes to your employer monitoring your computer screen or recording your keystrokes when you work, what would that count as? If you go on your social media, for instance, that would obviously be personal information because it identifies you. But what if you were only doing work-related activities on the computer? There was a case in Alberta called Parkland Regional Library where the employer of the library installed a key logging software, which records all the keystrokes of the user, onto the work computer of an employee without his knowledge. The privacy commissioner, the one who adjudicates these complaints, and I'll talk more about that later, ruled that even if most or even all of the information recorded by this monitoring software was the employee's work activities, all of it still had a personal component because it was used to determine how much work he did, his style or manner of doing the work, and his own choices as to how to prioritize the work. So this was enough to constitute personal information. So even if you aren't on social media or doing anything else you would consider private on your computer as you're being monitored, just the way you're doing your work is personal information and subject to the protection of these privacy laws. Of course, that doesn't just end the matter. Just because something is personal information doesn't mean your employer can't legally collect, use, or disclose it. All we've done so far is figure out that the screen and keystroke monitoring of the work you're doing remotely would be protected by the law. 
Now the question, what is the type of protection that is provided to that information? First, your employer needs to get your consent when they want to collect, use, or disclose your personal information. They can't just secretly be recording your screen or keystrokes without telling you. There are some rare exceptions to getting your consent for collecting your personal information, like if collecting the information is clearly in your interest and there's just no timely way that the employer can get it, or if it's required by the employer by some law. But these exceptions are not really related to monitoring your screen or keystrokes, and so the employer will almost always need your consent. And when we say consent, the law tells us we're talking about informed consent, which means not only must your employer get your approval about the monitoring, but they must also tell you why they are collecting this personal information. Under Pipetta, your consent would only be valid if it's reasonable to expect that you understand the nature, purpose, and consequences of the collection. So it would probably be insufficient for your employer to tell you that the monitoring is to make sure you're staying on task and doing the work. In order to validly give your consent, you would also need to know the nature of the monitoring, meaning what are they collecting about your activity? They would also need to make you informed about the consequences of this monitoring. What are they doing with it? What will happen to this information? In the BC and Alberta versions of the privacy law, valid consent also requires for the employer to tell you a person you can contact specifically regarding questions you have about this information collection, this monitoring. All right, so the employer has to tell you why they are monitoring you so you can understand what information is being collected about you and how it's going to be used. Then you have to agree to it. So does the employer then have the green light to collect whatever personal information they want, including monitoring you remotely? No, there's two other criteria they still must satisfy. The purpose for their collection of your personal information has to be reasonable, and especially relevant in this case of monitoring your computer remotely, the information they are collecting needs to be reasonable based on that purpose. As I mentioned earlier in this video, employers do have a serious need to make sure their employers are doing what they're supposed to when they're working from home. So the purpose of collecting your activity information seems reasonable, but to monitor your screen and record all of your keystrokes is not a reasonable collection of information for that purpose. It's just far too intrusive and other methods could be effective for that same purpose. Now, just to note, the different statutes express this a little bit differently. The BC law says the collection of personal information must fulfill the purpose of the collection. The Alberta law says the collection can only be to the extent that is reasonable for meeting the purpose of collection and the federal law says that the collection must be limited to what is necessary for the purpose of the collection. Small differences in the wording, but the idea is the same for all of these laws, that even if employers have a reasonable purpose to collect personal information about their employees, they can't just do it however they want. As based on previous investigations and determinations made by the Privacy Commissioner of Canada in the past, even if the collection of personal information through screen and keystroke monitoring could be demonstrably necessary to meet a need, and effective in meeting that need, the benefit gained from this collection would likely not be proportional to the loss of privacy, and there would be less invasive ways of achieving that same end. The indiscriminate manner of information collection through this type of monitoring also wouldn't be limiting collection to what is necessary for the purpose. As such, it likely wouldn't satisfy the test used in Pipetta cases, and the commissioner would make a finding that your complaint about your privacy being violated is well-founded. So speaking of the commissioner, I'll now talk about what to do in a situation where you think your employer is violating your privacy through, for example, this sort of computer monitoring. The first step, as it often is, is to make your complaint known to your employer, whether that's through the designated privacy official of the organization or through human resources or some other channel will obviously depend on the organization itself. But you want to see if you can resolve this directly first. And you can make your complaint based on the discomfort it causes or maybe the detrimental effects it has on your commitment to your role or your productivity. Or you can even use the information I've talked about in this video about asserting your rights under the relevant privacy statute of your jurisdiction. So let's say you try that and the employer is just sticking to this sort of monitoring. Then you can make a complaint to the privacy commissioner of your province if you're in British Columbia, Alberta or Quebec and to the Privacy Commissioner of Canada if you do federal work. The Privacy Commissions are all independent agencies that report to their relevant legislature and investigate privacy claims. What that means for you is that the complaint process is not like a tribunal or court-style trial, and so you don't need a lawyer, although you can always get one for additional assistance, but the Privacy Commissioner will conduct their own independent investigation based on what you submit to them, and they'll obviously be in touch with you and the employer as they conduct the investigation, 
but there's no hearing. You should also know that the first step is for the commissioner to actually decide whether to investigate your complaint. So it's not necessarily a guarantee your complaint will be investigated. They'll start by looking at things like if they have the jurisdiction and the facts that you've submitted in your complaint to see if it warrants an investigation. Now, at the end of this investigation, the commission can determine that the employer didn't violate the relevant privacy law or that they did. And if they did, they usually make recommendations to the employer to change what they're doing in order to comply with the law. And the employer needs to comply with those recommendations because they are enforceable in court. And these determinations can be appealed to review by a judge. But that is pretty much the extent of what the commissioner can do for you as the employee, which is ultimately to make sure that the employer is now complying with the law. They can't award you money or issue fines or punishments or things like that because it's not a court. So you would use complaints to the privacy commissioner to get your employer to stop its intrusive practices. But if you have suffered a loss or damage or injury as a result of your employer's personal information collection or use practices, then you actually want to file a lawsuit in court. And now this is where Ontario comes in, as I mentioned earlier in the video. In Ontario, because there is no provincial statute for privacy in the workplace for the private sector, and Pipetta only applies to federal works, so you won't have the same protections afforded in these other provinces like BC and Alberta. That means in theory, in Ontario, your employer may be able to legally and indiscriminately monitor your screen and keystrokes as part of your employment. It sounds absurd because we know that same policy would be found to be unreasonable for the purpose of employee supervision in the other provinces. But your employer would at least have to give you notice that they're doing it. They can't just do it secretly. And so in terms of filing a lawsuit in court, this is where in Ontario you have some legal recourse for intrusive employer activities. You could potentially sue your employer for the tort of intrusion upon seclusion or perhaps breach of contract relating to your employment contract. I'm not going to discuss these claims and how they would fit with remote monitoring in this video, but I just wanted to point out where relief could be sought for an employee who had suffered monetary or maybe even psychological harms as a result of the employer surveillance and as well just an avenue for Ontario employees. So I hope that was an informative introduction to the privacy rights of employees in the workplace, especially when home is becoming the workplace more and more. As always, this is just some information about your legal rights and obligations and not advice for your specific situation for which you want to consult your own lawyer. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, and please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Until next time.